Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the Everything Search Tool. So this is a free program you could download and install that allows you to search your computer and it does a pretty good job of searching and finding things very fast. So if you don't like the way uh, Windows finds things like when you search in File Explorer or you don't like the way it indexes your hard drives, you could try this out because it's a kind of a little better way to search here. So once you download and install it, it's going to want to install a service to kind of run in the background and it'll index your computer within seconds here. And you also notice you'll have a little guy running down here too. So once you open it, you'll just kind of see your drives and your files and that kind of thing. And to do a search, so I have a folder here. Let's go back out here called dogs with some pictures in there. So let's say I search for dogs. You can see it instantly finds the, the uh, results here and it'll show you the path. And if you want to go into one of them, you can just go like that open it up or if you want to open up a specific picture right there just like that and you can also right click on items you know delete them copy paste them add to zip files do all kinds of other stuff just like you would if you were in file explorer so it's a pretty pretty simple thing to use there but it does have some other options so we'll go through the menus here uh, we're going to talk about this in a second you can export your uh, searches and so on edit typical edit menu uh, the view menu, how you want to see your results, default is details, you know, the window size, zooming, sort by, refresh, and so on. So search options, uh, match the case, whole word, path, etc. Advanced search options, you want to look for exact phrases or none of these words, include subfolders. Uh, you can make filters, and if you want to narrow down what type of files it finds instead of everything, you could uh, pick one of these types of files. And then there's bookmarks. So let's say I'm going to use this search uh, a lot. I can add it to bookmarks and call it dogs. And so now let's say I did a new search. We'll call it trails because I have some other pictures here for trails. And I wanted to access one of my bookmarks. You need to go to bookmarks. Now that it's there, you click on that, and it brings up your bookmark with the dog search results. And then, of course, you could uh, organize your bookmarks, edit them, and so on, and delete them. Just like that. All right, so tools. Here's the file list editor. So how this works, you open it up, and it'll give you a new file list. So let's say we want to add some files to it. You can add files or folders. Let's say we're going to add some things that change a lot, so we want to be able to find them quickly. So let's say the meeting schedule, fax cover sheet, the calendar, phone list, agenda. So now these are in your file list. So if we close this, it's going to ask us if we want to save it. We'll call this, uh, type it here, docs. So now when we're here, we go to file, open file list. So there's our docs. But one thing I've noticed, which I'm not a big fan of, if you have something here, it seems to want to stop that from happening. So once we clear that out, Open file list, docs, and you can see here's the files that we selected here, and it also likes to add the uh, folders that they're contained under. So then if you've done here, you could close the file list, come back to your main section here. All right, so now there's some options. So general options you know, for the user interface, uh, run in the background, show the tray icon down there, search as you type, uh, the home areas, Match the case, last, last word. So every, right now it's set to default to, you know, to find everything. So, it's, you know, case value doesn't matter and so on. Path doesn't matter. Uh, search options here. Results, how you want to see the results here or how, how the results work when you see them. View options, context menus, fonts and colors, keyboard. History, so you, you could enable the history. It's disabled by default, so if you enable it, then you could go back and see your other searches, and you could also clear them and sort them, which is kind of cool. Then this option here, you could change the database location and index information, uh, NTFS options. So by default, it'll sc scan any uh, physical attached drives, so C drive and the E drive, which are NTFS formatted. And you can use some REFS formatted volumes if you want to add them. Folders, if you have some uh, 
folders that are not getting indexed or if they're on a network drive or an external drive, you could add them here as well. So they'll be added to your list. Now the file list settings, exclusions, if you want to exclude certain files or folders. And then this is kind of cool because you could set up a this computer here to run as an ETP FTP server. So that way you could actually connect to it using one of these protocols and then search this computer from a different computer. And then there's the HTTP server, which is disabled by default, but I have it enabled. So you can actually search via a web page. So what you do, you enable it, then you just go to your browser. And then you'll see you have the same two drives here. And you could just kind of browse them. Or you could do the search if you want. Bring it up there. And then you can actually go into a folder from there. Open files within your browser if they're supported. And so you can actually have this web page open in your browser in a tab. And then you could just do searches right from there without even having to run the program. So as you can see, you know, it does quite a bit of stuff, and there's other stuff that it does that I didn't mention, and it's free to use. So it's worth trying if you're uh, doing a lot of searches and you find you're not getting the results you like or you're not getting them fast enough and you want to do some more advanced searches, you could give this a try. So I'll put a link in the description so you can download it, and then you could uh, try it out for yourself and see how you like it. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.